I'm TJ Sheehy. I'm the data analyst for the marijuana program. That mostly means I'm the metric person here at OLCC. Um, so this presentation specifically is going to be fairly producer-centric uh, and touching on metric and testing rules as it relates to that section of the supply chain. So some general reminders and common mistakes. That harvest lots have to be created as a package in metric within 45 days of harvest. What that specifically means is that in metric, when you have a harvest, you harvest it as a wet weight of each plant. It goes into a harvest in metric. Within 45 days, you need to create a package or more than one package for your finished product out of that harvest. And the package has to be specifically tied to the harvest, not just created out of thin air. So specifically what that means, do not do this. This is creating a package out of thin air. You have on your left hand side your package tag and your item, but on your right hand side you don't have any source identified. So that contents button is where, and this is true of whether you're packaging out of a harvest or another package, on the right hand side that contents button is where you identify the source. That is the key to the traceability. If you were to do it this way, that package uh, 13608 would appear from nowhere. We would lose all line of sight to where it came from. So it's very, very important to make sure your testing results travel through, to make sure that uh, you're properly identifying your harvest lot, to make sure that all products are linked properly. This is how you should do it. So this is specifically coming out of a harvest. Uh, on your right hand side, you identify where it's coming from, how much is coming from that uh, source, and on the left hand side, where it's going to. So when in the rules we talk about attaching a UID tag to a harvest lot, this is what we mean. What you have to do is you create all of your packages of your product out of your harvest within 45 days from each harvest. So uh, we are in the process of calling all producers who have at least one harvest that's in, out, that's in violation of this rule. Now I want to get into the, into the testing rules. As most of you probably know, the uh, OHA testing rules were revised in December. Um, and there's a few key revisions. So number one uh, is a redefinition of what a harvest lot is. So it used to be that a harvest lot uh, was grown at the same time, harvested at the same time, and the same strain. So you could have you know, a row of Blue Dream and a row of Sour Diesel. You could bring them down at exactly the same time. They were grown under the same conditions, and they'd have to be tested separately. That is no longer true. The harvest lot definition now is that it's uh, cultivated using the same practices, harvested within a 48-hour period, and cured under uniform conditions. Notice that it no longer mentions strain as being a component of this. So a harvest lot is only grown the same excuse me, grown the same way, harvested at the same time, same time being 48 hours. Another part of this that changed under the rules is that um, this, the way that things can be sampled changed slightly. So it used to be you'd have your harvest lot, you'd have your 10 pound batch within that harvest lot, all samples, all tests had to be batch specific. That's changed slightly. The upside of that for, for producers is that it reduces the amount of testing that has to be done. The downside is it makes it slightly more complicated. I'll go through each of these test types. So moisture content and water activity, the rules around that have not been revised. They weren't touched by OHA directly. So uh, a sample for moisture content and water activity still has to be from a single batch. It can, however, now be multi-strain, but that's only because the harvest lot definition has changed. So the sample for moisture content water activity hasn't changed, but because now harvest lots can be multi-strain, those samples can be multi-strain. On potency, uh, those can now be taken across batches and, importantly, across harvest lots. So if I bring down my, or if I do a manicure of my Blue Dream on uh, Monday, and then in two Mondays I take the whole plant down, uh, those would have to be in different harvest lots because they're not harvested within the same 48 hour window. But because they're the same strain, I can sample from each of those harvest lots, pool it all, to, the, the lab can sample and pool it all together and do one potency test on that. And there's no maximum on the size of combined batches. So if my entire crop is Blue Dream, I could have one test of potency on my entire crop regardless of size. Pesticides is somewhat similar but with an important distinction. It can be sampled across batches. It can be multi-strain. Uh, but the max of all of those uh, batches combined can be no more than 10 pounds. So if I have uh, two five-pound batches 
that I sample from both, that's fine. But I cannot have, for example, three five pound batches that I'm sampling together. And one important caveat here is that it's going to get a little bit confusing on the next slide. This is the OHA specific portion of the pesticide rules. OLCC has a parallel rule available to OLCC producers that depending on the specific situation may be more advantageous for you in terms of reducing the overall pesticide testing. This is what I'm talking about. This is our one out of three uh, limited pesticide testing. So it's an OLCC only rule. So I'm going to, for purposes of this, assume everyone here is within the OLCC system. So this is only for OLCC licensees. Um, so our rule, this one out of three, coexists with the OHA combinability rule that was on the previous slide. Um, you choose one path or the other depending on the specifics of your harvest lot. Get into a, some of the specifics in a little bit. Um, the specific rule is that a minimum of one third of your batches within a harvest lot are tested for pesticides. And all of your batches within a harvest lot are tested for the other required testing. Uh, so that means potency, moisture content, water activity. So this table lays it out a little bit more. What this does not mean is only one test for your entire lot. This does not mean that. This means one out of three. There's a denominator that's very important here. So to make this specific, if you have a 30 pound harvest lot and that's your, your dried product, so 30 pounds of your dried product, you would presumably have three batches, uh, three 10 pound batches because your batches can be no more than 10 pounds. So in that situation, 30 pound lot, three batches, one out of three, one of your batches is tested for pesticides. The other two are tested for everything. And we have this sort of step process here. So um, each range, 30 pound range of your harvest lot has an additional batch that needs to be tested. Uh, the important piece here is that if your harvest lot, uh, sorry, if the batch, uh, if one or more batches that was tested for pesticides fails for pesticides, it triggers a pesticide test for all of them. So if I'm a 30 pound harvest lot and I have one tested for pesticides and it fails, the other two have to be tested for pesticides. It's gotten a little bit more complicated in terms of how to actually sample. It used to be you take one sample, do one, all of your stuff on that one sample, but now because some of it has to be strain specific, some of it can be combined, some of it has to be batch specific, uh, there's a little bit more forethought that has to be put into it to make sure it's all right. So a uh, general reminder, the labs are the ones who actually physically take the samples. Uh, they come out, they're accredited by Orlap, they operate under the OHA rules, and they are the ones who know how much product to take and how to take it. So they physically take the samples, uh, but because the source batch is in your inventory and it, you own it in metric, you create the metric package that has that amount of weight in it. Um, I'm gonna run through sort of a uh, recommendation of how to do uh, the sampling procedure but other methods are possible if you or a lab is a better way of doing it do it as long as you're meeting these rules um, this is just a recommendation and then the last piece is labs are required to file a sampling pr uh, protocol with or lab so they may come and say you know you may want them to do this type of sampling approach that I'm gonna lay out but they may have another one because they have to file it with or lab um, so they should have, when they come out, a certain way of doing it. For this example, this is the handout. Uh, we're going to go through it step by step. So let's assume we have three harvest lots. We've got one uh, set of plants of OG Kush, and then let's say a week later we have another harvest where we take down our Sour Diesel and our Blue Dream, and then a week after that we've got more Blue Dream and then Jack Herrera. Out of that, so let's uh, speed it up by 45 days. We've got our uh, packages created. So we've got one three pound batch. Let's say, you know, we harvested it wet, it dried out, it's now only three pounds of finished product in our first harvest lot. Our second harvest lot, the two strains, it's one single batch of six pounds, but we've packaged it strain specifically into three pounds each. So one batch can be split across multiple containers uh, but the recommendation here is to have your packages be strain specific and ideally your harvest strain specific too because it really simplifies things. Um, and then harvest three, uh, we've got our blue dream came out to multiple batches. We've got 20 pounds total of finished product, but because a batch can only be 10 pounds, we've got it packaged in two separate packages under two tags. Uh, and then the Jack Herrera came out to 10 pounds. So we've got, uh, one, two, three, four batches. 
across the three harvest lots. So we're going to start with potency. So potency, remember, is strain specific, can be combined across batches, and there's no limit in, in the size of the batches that it comes from. We've got sample one, four, and seven coming from each individual strain. And then we've got sample six drawing from the total of 23 pounds of Blue Dream. And that's fine because there's no size limit. It just has to be uh, strain specific. It can be across batches, across harvest lots. It just has to be strain specific. This is sample three, pesticide testing under the OHA rule. So under the OHA rule, this is going to be most advantageous if you have uh, multiple harvests with small amounts of product. Um, small harvest lots that you want to combine. So we've got um, our OG Kush, Sour Diesel, and Blue Dream from harvest one and two that total nine pounds. So we're going to take one pesticide sample from that, sample three, because it's multi-strain across batches and a total of less than 10 pounds is being sampled from. So in this scenario, because I've got multiple small harvests, uh, it's most advantageous for me to go down the OHA combinability route and do it this way. Next is the last one of uh, water activity and moisture content as well as the OLCC one out of three. So um, importantly on the OLCC side, the lab needs to take enough material to do pesticide testing on all of it, but they may only test 33% of it, right? So um, let's start with harvest lot one and two. We've already taken our pesticide sample for these under the OHA uh, pesticide rule. Um, so all we're sampling for is water activity and moisture content for each of those. Those have to be uh, within, a, within a batch, but because batches can be multi-strain, they don't have to be strain specific. So in package one, we're taking one sample from one batch. Harvest lot two, we're again taking one sample from one batch, but that batch happens to be multi-strain. Harvest lot three is where we're doing both water activity and moisture content and also pesticides. So you see there, Sample eight, nine, and 10, enough, it's gonna take the same amount of product as a sample from each of those packages, those source packages, but only one of them is gonna be tested for pesticides. So we see sample eight, there it's probably gonna come out to something like 23 grams and the lab will take it back and test it for all three. Sample nine and 10, probably also gonna be 23 grams. If sample eight passes, it's only gonna be tested for those two tests, only water activity and moisture content.